Two years ago, Laverne Myers lost her son to gang violence. And each month for the past two years, she visits his gravesite to reflect on what might have been had the circumstances been different. That's the whole thing about it because I had never talked. I always talked with him. He'd be every day. He was this the safest place. You know, if he were dead someplace else besides Savannah, I would have said, okay. But in Savannah, he actually get killed. Where I think it would never happen to him because he does it. But he always, you know, lying there and everything. So. Hmm. How 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 was he killed? He um actually killed by his people, his own friends. He was the well when I went there, tell me he was shoot in his back and every stuff. But when I get a police report, he will actually shoot about seven times. Like he had one hair, one hair, one hair, one hair, hair, and he bum on his legs. And then he, um, when I questioned after one, when I, the next day, he actually was on the ground before they called the ambulance. And a friend of mine was holding him and she was saying, she called his mama, he didn't want her to calm him. He didn't want her to calm him. He was saying he gonna be all right. The thing is, in the night time, when you have, you lose a loved one and a child, I used to have people say, in the night is when it affect you, in the night. I was going crazy. When I mean crazy, I was realizing a lot of stuff. I always tell people, a father means a lot in a child's life, okay? I See, I always remember myself until the other kids, them father step in and he's strict. So I see how they act to me different than with he. And when my friends them with their, my 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 um friends them have sons that have fathers and they are doing very well. So I to me I feel it's 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 have a lot to do with fathers. Both if you have both parents in a child life, I think it's great. I have seen evidence in regards to more affiliation and association with gangs. And I think at this point in time, our children are still in an early stage of this. But at the same time, it, it um, means we have to be concerned about it because it's grown. Where we were five, six years ago is no indication in terms of how serious it is now. It's growing. It's continuing to grow. I think the community still has a possibility of getting a handle on this of getting control of it. We're not Compton, we're not Chicago, we're not Detroit. But if we don't become proactive rather than reactive, it's going to get to a point where we cannot control it. But we do everything that we can in the confines of the uh, perimeter of the campus to control it within. But there's only so much we can do because at the end of the day, they go home and it's uh, not a policed, not a controlled, restrictive environment as the school is. But I definitely, definitely see the indicators and the evidence that our children are associated with this and that they do have knowledge of it. Dr. Sharon McCollum is principal of Eudora Ken High School, which serves students from both St. Thomas and St. John. It is a responsibility that she does not take lightly. Even children raised in a strong family unit by both parents are subject to the influence of gangs. Um, the school that my son goes to is a larger school. It's, it's, it's quite unique because I say there's no other school on the islands like that from K through 12. So you have the influence of the bigger kids and the younger kids. 
it's right in town. They still have the influences of what's going on, you know, right in town around them. So, you know, just walking from point A to point B, a lot of things could happen. You know, and I, I think we tend to not notice things because we always think we are safe. We are protected, we're small, everybody knows what's going on. But, you know, from things I've seen, we don't always know what's going on. You know, I myself, I see things, but I wasn't quite sure what was going on. I didn't know the meaning until I attended a workshop that Mr. Canwell conducted in St. John, where we took our boys, our two younger boys. We took them. So when I see certain things in the copy books, then I knew, you know, what it was all about. You know, stop doing these things, please. You know, I would only see it in the copy books for school. I never saw it and anything at home, but just in school, I guess he knows them. And then we search their rooms and stuff like that, so they wouldn't. You know, I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly to what extent, you know, the involvement is, but the obvious facts are that some kind of interest, some kind of enticement is there. Where it's coming from, don't know. Really don't know. But it's really time for us to start paying attention, especially in school and St. John, especially in school. The Access Channel, the government channel with a community focus. Some of the challenges that the department faces in today's society. I, I, I know clearly we got into the violent crime that's um, plaguing our islands a little bit later, but there are, there have got to be some changes in, in policing that you're seeing that's presenting a challenge to you as you go forward in, a, in almost a new generation of policing. Obviously, and I don't think that any of these um, challenges came overnight. Obviously, um, you know, over a, a number of years we have seen where uh, our youths in particular have really taken a different turn. We have the moral issues um, in our community, our social issues, as well as the economic issues that confront us. But I, I think that one paradigm that we have seen most recently is the gang activities in our neighborhood and our communities, as well as our schools. And there's got to be a corrective solution. We'll get there eventually. It won't happen overnight, no doubt, as the problem didn't develop overnight. But certainly, there's no quick fix. Let's get that out the way, you know, right at the start. Well, there's no quick fix, but I, I truly believe that if we could go to the root of the root causes of the problem, and, and certainly we're seeing where individuals are utilizing the younger kids um, to perpetrate acts and use uh, the opportunities of, um, of social gatherings or um, large gatherings, events, to perpetrate acts of criminal violence against their adversaries. I think that the youths, in order to be initiated in some of these gangs, are required to commit bodily harm, uh, significant bodily harm to their adversaries. And I, I think that if we could get back to the root cause of, of these issues, those individuals that's mostly adults, that's behind you know, some of the influence of these young kids, that I think that we could start to make an impact of that. Consequently, um, as I assume the position, one of the first individuals I hired was a tactical gang intervention coordinator. Again, to go at the root cause of, of this issue, get out into the communities, intervene, and take some intervention action to actually get those source, the root causes, and weed them out of, of our community, um, certainly arrest them, and, and hopefully we could prosecute them. Um, we've also been working with the Attorney General's office that when these individuals are picked up, uh, that, they're, um, that they're brought to justice swiftly. And um, you know, so that we could start to resolve some of these issues, I think as well as as um, community participation in, in, in this concerns uh, with these challenges is important that we're able to reach the the community. Um, and I truly believe that that we're starting to to see some results of that in terms of the community saying enough is enough, and they're coming forward with information, whether it's through crime stoppers or some other means, you know, um, because. As we continue to see these violence that's perpetrated on individuals, while we see that there's some clearly some retaliation among these groups, posses, if you want to call it that, or these gangs, I think truly the problem of innocent individuals being hurt in the interim is concerning uh, to the general public. 